Chicago Bears, what a crazy season. I mean, they went from having all these games where Justin Fields brought them close within winning the game and he was breaking off 70-yard runs to eventually looking into the number one pick on the last weekend of the season. So this really feels like a massive pivot point for the franchise. There's going to be arguments about picking one of these QBs up top or even trading Justin Fields. You know these QBs in the drafts better than I do. What do you think the Bears should be doing at this point? I think there's absolutely no world in which the Chicago Bears take a quarterback. It's absolutely obscene that there's any conversation about it. But I think it's really smart from the Bears to make make the rumour mill start to believe that they could potentially look at quarterbacks. Because we all know that the only reason a team is trading up for the 101 is to go and get a quarterback. And if you are convinced that the Bears aren't taking a quarterback, why are you trading up to the 101? I think that they need to to just get that little bit of hint of, oh, we might take a quarterback. And that then doubles the price of the 101. I think this this pick and, and lucking into the 101, should we say, after what the Texans did in week 18, is has the potential to completely transform this franchise and build around Justin Fields. Justin Fields was phenomenal from a fantasy perspective. He had nine of his final 10 games as a top 10 quarterback. That's with a poor offensive line with no competent skill position players. I know that they went and spent the 32nd overall pick to get Chase Claypool, but let's not pretend that he was competent. If they're going to you know, move back from the 101, they can improve the offensive line. They can give Justin Fields weapons. And this offense could really take a big step forward next year. Yeah, I think it's that's where I land on it too. I think it's too soon to give up on Justin Fields and what he flashed this year was incredible. He wasn't very good in the passing game. That's something that is unquestionable for me. Like he really ranked lowly in efficiency metrics and like DVOA. He just wasn't good. But you look at the offensive line, you look at the weapons around him, and it's clear that if they build around him, he could really be a fantastic quarterback going forward. One of the areas which will support that is the running back position. So David Montgomery is a free agent. He didn't really perform incredibly well this year. Even when Khalil Herbert was injured, he never really got going like he did last year. Do you think that this room is ready to be turned over at Khalil Herbert or do you think they try to re-sign David Montgomery? If they re-sign David Montgomery, I'm genuinely going to cry. I am so excited for Khalil Herbert to get this backfield on his own. He is explosive. He is everything you want. He is everything David Montgomery dreams of being. Khalil Herbert, in games where he saw 15 touches or more, averaged 19.3 fantasy points this last year. He is a stud hiding in plain sight. And I think that if, you know, if, if you're in early best balls, if you're in dynasty, and there's still some thoughts about, oh, is Khalil Herbert the guy? I think he's a screaming value right now. And I think that for me, David Montgomery, he, he's a ham and egger. He is nothing special. And I think that we're going to see in free agency... I think he's probably going to get lost in the shuffle. You know, this is a fantastic free agent running back class. And I think that the NFL is going to view David Montgomery as nothing more than average. And I think that he's probably going to sit out there for a little while and probably end up having to accept a, a 1B type role on a middling team. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm no David Montgomery fan at all. And, you know, it just it wasn't there for him this year. His yards per game dropped to a career low 50.1. Khalil Herbert was seeing fewer rush attempts, but had a better average amount at 56.8. And really, Khalil Herbert was the one bright spot and consistent part of the offense in the opening season. You know, we look at wide receiver, Chase Claypool. They gave up a second round pick, as you mentioned. He totaled 111 yards in six games, averaged 3.6 PPR points. Genuinely just a terrible trade. Outside of that, the only fantasy relevant player was Cole Komet. But even he, you know, he finished well in terms of tight end total points, but he wasn't a good player to have on a redraft or managed team for the whole season. No, I mean, look, you can look at his season end stats and say, oh, Cole Komet had a decent year, you know, he put up points, but it was basically in two big games, wasn't it? And those two big games probably happened when he was sat on your bench because you didn't feel comfortable starting him. And I think that that's probably going to be Cole Komet moving forward. I expect this offense to add significant number of weapons. And I think Cole Komet is, you know, a, a solid, competent NFL tight end, but he's not someone that I'm ever going to feel confident in from a, a fantasy perspective moving forward. Do you think that there's just one last kind of buy opportunity on Justin Fields 
whilst there's this kind of talk around they could take somebody else at the 101 it's got your dynasty values on screen here you can see you've gotten valued at three first round picks do you think you can maybe sneak in like two firsts in a second to prime away from somebody before the bears trade out of that pick i think it's absolutely worth the conversation i think that you know, over the next month, these rumours around the Bears taking a quarterback are only going to pick up because they're desperate for somebody to come and give them a haul for that 101. So, yeah, if somebody's nervous, if somebody doesn't believe that Justin Fields is, you know, is the long-term answer, then, yeah, you, you might be able to get him a, at, a, at a cheap price. But for me, I know you touched on earlier about his poor efficiency as a passing quarterback. For me, that's a lot around about the surrounding talent. I still think he has got elite arm talent. I still think he can make every throw. And I think that he's showing development in progression through reads, which was part of the question mark about him coming out. And I think that once you give him some competent receiving weapons, once you give him a little bit more time where he can sit in the pocket, I think you're going to see that passing game improve. And if that passing game improves, do you think there's hope for Darnell Mooney? He was somebody who loads of us completely whiffed on this year. His ADP was in the fifth round of best ball drafts in September before the season started. You've got his value as a late second. Um, it just He didn't show it this year. He couldn't command a large enough target share to pay off his ADP. He really wasn't doing a whole lot of anything before he got injured. But if there's a good wide receiver one and Claypool is the wide receiver 2A to Mooney's 2B, do you think that he could return value a year from now? I think I'm never going to trust a player like Darnell Mooney in Dynasty. I didn't like him coming out. The NFL didn't like him coming out. That's why he was a day three pick. Yes, he's shown flashes, but he's shown flashes when there was nobody else in the offense around him to compete with. And I think that the reason he was being drafted where he was in best ball last year and in Dynasty was because people were saying, well, someone's got to catch the ball. And to me, whenever that's the answer, <laughs> that's a player that I don't want to touch. So I think that, yes, next year, if they bring in a, you know, a, a target sieve or someone that's going to command that target volume, then yeah, Donald Mooney's probably going to have some competent boom weeks. He's, you know, the type of player he is he's a deep threat. He, he can catch two, three balls and put up, you know, a hundred yards and two touchdowns. He he's probably someone that I would roster in best ball, but in dynasty, I don't know if I'm ever going to be in a position where this is still going to be a run first offense. I don't think there's going to be the volume to command for him to be stopped on a week in week out basis. <laughs> <laughs> 